Today I'm going to show you how you can create an accurate 3D model using just a drone and an iPhone. By utilizing imagery, LiDAR scans, and single point observations, we can combine all of these different data sets to create our highly accurate 3D model. Now every data set is going to be utilizing a technology known as real-time kinematic corrections, or RTK. RTK is the process of observing your current location utilizing satellite positioning. This current location can then be corrected utilizing something known as a base station, a known static location where a GNSS receiver sits, calculating its corrections for its position. Now these corrections are then sent to our RTK rover, and it corrects the positional accuracy of the data being collected. Now in order to do this, you need a device that is RTK enabled, which means that it needs an RTK antenna to accept the corrections from the base station, which is why this DJI Phantom 4 has a little antenna sticking off the top of it. This little antenna is providing the drone's images with an RTK solution, making them more accurate than a normal Phantom 4. And the same goes for this iPhone. While it might have built-in GPS and really good camera sensors and a LiDAR sensor, the positional accuracy of this iPhone by itself is not that great. But if I add in the Viadoc RTK antenna, suddenly my iPhone now has an antenna that is receiving RTK corrections and providing those corrections to the data being collected on the phone. And now these two devices both have RTK enabled positioning, providing us with the highest level of accuracy in data collection. Now I did set a whole bunch of ground control points on the site to help us validate and tie in all of our data. Now these points will be measured with the Viadoc RTK attached to the iPhone using its single point observation mode. The first thing we're going to do is measure the coordinates of the targets on the ground using the Viadoc RTK. Now with the Viadoc attached to my iPhone, I'm going to be using an app called Pix4D Catch. It's free in the app store so make sure you download it. We'll go ahead and launch Pix4D Catch. And right off the bat, you can see I've got a live view of my surroundings. In the upper left hand corner, I can see the type of GPS that I'm using. So this is the integrated GPS sensor. I want to use the Viadoc RTK. And this is connected through Bluetooth with my phone. So there's no wires or anything. This simple attachment is just the case that attaches to the device to keep it nice and compact. So I'm going to select RTK via Bluetooth and I've entered in all the appropriate information to connect to the base stations using the Entrip system. Once I'm satisfied, I'll hit connect. All right, now I've got one of my ground control points here with the target and I'm going to be using this Viadoc to measure the coordinates using a single point observation. Next to the shutter button, you're going to see a little button. This is your GCP manager. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and open up the menu. Now I want to collect a new GCP point, so I'm going to select new GCP collection. I'm gonna set the coordinate system. So for me, I am in Michigan South. So I'm in Michigan South. My vertical coordinate system is NAVD88. And the geoid, I'm just going to select the latest geoid, which is geoid18. The collection name, I will just call this Vidoc Control. Save. And now I can add a new GCP. Now the technology that's being used is a relative laser plummet. When I turn on use laser, a laser starts to shine at the bottom of the device. A little difficult to see in the daytime, but there is the laser right there shining from the bottom of the device. And so using this laser, I can get right into the center of my ground control point. Now description, I'm going to call this a GCP. And measure and duration is how long you want it to collect data for. So five seconds is enough. Okay, I'm gonna get my laser right in the center and I'm gonna click measure. I'm gonna make sure I'm still over the point and keep that bubble right in the center. And there we go, now we've got the coordinates for this ground control point. Now I know you're wondering, how does the Viadoc know the antenna height? With traditional GNSS receivers, I need to identify the height of my rod, that way I can create an offset from my antenna height to where the point is at the bottom of the pole. But with the Viadoc, this laser is measuring the relative distance from that point to the antenna. So you don't actually have to measure it yourself, it is automatically measuring it every single time you take an observation. Pretty sweet. All right, so now I'm gonna go all around the house and measure all the ground control points that I set using the Viadoc. Okay. 
Okay, great. We've got all of our ground control points measured using the iPhone with the Viadoc RTK. And now we'll start flying the drone. We're going to be doing both an aerial flight and a low oblique flight. Now we're not going to do a high oblique flight because we're going to be using the iPhone with the Viadoc. I'm going to show you how much better it is to use this rather than flying your drone at very low altitudes. I've set up my aerial flight as well as my low oblique flight. I'm going to upload these missions and start collecting imagery with the drone. This right here will be my takeoff zone. And we'll set the drone right in the middle. Everything looks good, so we'll slide to execute. Start operation. All right, and the drone finished its aerial flight. So it's landing. All right, now I'm gonna load up the low oblique flight and we're going to run that mission. Mission is loaded, we'll hit start. We'll use the absolute height and we'll slide to execute. Start operation. There it is, a speck in the sky. And as you can see, it's capturing the house at different oblique angles. As you can see, the drone has now flown aerial and oblique, and it is now landing. Now that we've finished flying the drone, it's time to collect imagery and LiDAR scanning data with our iPhone using the Vidoc RTK. Now the reason you'd want to combine drone imagery and iPhone imagery together is that the drone just cannot capture all the data necessary. Take a look at these two images here. While we have a clear view of the siding of the house, we don't see underneath of the roof. That's because the drone is capturing the data from up above and not down on the ground. Now the iPhone 13 Pro has some amazing camera sensors, as well as a built-in LiDAR scanner. Now using the Pix4D Catch app, I'm able to take images with my iPhone and supplement it with LiDAR scans to fill in any of the gaps. Combining that with RTK positioning and fusing that data into drone imagery with RTK positioning, we're going to have a really nice and accurate model of this house. All right, I've got the Pix4D Catch app on. The Viadoc RTK has a fixed reading, and now we're going to start collecting data. So the little squares that you see are the LiDAR scans, but down at the bottom we are generating a live view of the data. I try to get all of the tops because we are taking images. If we take a look here, there's all the images that we're taking in blue. And I want to make sure I get the ground control points in those. It'll scan with the LiDAR sensor, but also take images with the camera sensor. So get the tops here, and we can change over to the live view here. Let's go down, make sure we take pictures here. We'll get the control point, we'll get up underneath the roof, very important. There we go. The bottom facade of the house here. Make sure we get every inch of the house. Let me try to get inside here a little bit better. Yeah, I like that. It doesn't have to be scanned with the LiDAR sensor, it could just be captured as an image with the camera. Get all up in there, get all of that detail. We'll grab this control point as well. All right, get all up in here. Some nice detail on the side garage door. Very good, again, that LiDAR sensor is going to help us fill in gaps, give us some uh, active remote sensing, and really just overall improve our accuracy. Almost done, and there we go. We've completed our scans. Now I can hit pause and check. Now after collecting all that data, I can look and see the scan of my house. Look at this, very nice. I've got a lot of detail down on the ground level that the drone just wasn't able to see. If I click on images, I can see all the individual images that were taken. Looks like a total of 
909 images. So while the iPhone was scanning with the LiDAR sensor, it was also taking images with its camera. So very nice having both data sets. And as before, the images are in NAD83, which is the coordinate system I want. And we have our horizontal and vertical accuracies, which is good to have um, as we tie in all the data sets together and then georeference our ground control. Points. Now that we've collected all of our data, it's time to head inside and process all of this to create our accurate 3D model. Hello, and welcome to the office. Now we're going to be bringing in our drone data as well as the iPhone's data from the Viadoc RTK and processing all that data into Pix4D-Matic. Now you have the option here to the right to select either an image or a folder, but honestly you could just open up File Explorer and drag in any files that you want. So I've got File Explorer here and I'm going to simply drag my two drone image files as well as my Viadoc data and bring it right into Pix4D-Matic. The software automatically recognizes what I've brought in and it's adding in all of the imagery. Okay, all of our data has been added. If I zoom in here, all these little blue dots are pictures that were taken. This on the outside here are the oblique imagery that I took with the drone. In the center, this is the aerial imagery that I took from nadir position. And then this crazy looking circle-ish thingy. Yeah, that's all the iPhone imagery that we took with the Viadoc. Now it's important to identify our coordinate system and I want this to be in state plane coordinates. If you go down here to the right, you'll see where it says tie points. There's a little pencil down here this will let you set the coordinate system for the entire project. I'll click on the pencil. If I click on horizontal coordinate system, I know that I'm in NAD 83, Michigan South, and it's the first option here, and the vertical coordinate system, NAVD 88, and I am the first option. The difference between the first option and the second option is that this is international feet, and the bottom one is US survey feet. So depending on which state you're working in will determine your units. In Michigan, we use international feet, so I will select the first option. Your geoid, since we capture data in WGS84 with our ellipsoid height, state plane coordinates are represented in geoid height. So there is a geoid correction that needs to be added and the 2018 correction is the latest one, so we always want to use geoid 18 anytime we're referencing between ellipsoid height and geoid height. Geoid. 18. Okay, and I'll hit apply. Now to validate that my data is coming in in the correct spot, I'm going to turn on the base map. This will be a satellite image and just seeing that the satellite image fits in the correct spot means that our imagery will be in the right place and in the right coordinate system. I'll click up here on the gear and I'll change this to satellite. And there we go, it is going around my house so I know that these images are in the correct spot in the correct coordinate system. Now, I typically like to do the calibration first before I bring in the ground control points because I usually have RTK enabled devices, whether that's my Phantom 4 that has RTK or my iPhone that has the Viadoc RTK. Because of this, I can trust that my initial process will come very close to the ground control points and I don't have to do as much work. So I'm gonna come up here to the processing options. Now here it says select processing template. I'm actually gonna just select custom. I'm gonna turn on the calibrate option. For template, I'm just going to keep it set to large scale and corridor. For the pipeline, I wanna change this to trusted location and orientation because we have RTK enabled imagery. And I wanna make sure I use the depth maps that was generated from the Pix4D Catch app. This is gonna give us a much better calibrated data set as we fuse the drone data and the iPhone data. All right, this all looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and click start. Okay, once my calibration is completed, I'm going to import my ground control points and geo-reference them in all of my images. So this right here is the first ground control point. I can see it in all of the images from the iPhone, as well as the images that I captured with the drone. So I went ahead and geo-referenced all of these positions. Here's another one. I've got more images from the iPhone and the drone images. So I've referenced all of them. One more here, and I've got all the different positions. Very good, very nice. Once I've georeferenced all my ground control points, I can then re-optimize my project. If I come up to process and select re-optimize. And that'll now tighten up and adjust all of my calibrated images and make them fit into those ground control points while also utilizing the high accuracy geotags from their RTK antennas. All right, once we've re-optimized, we're going to generate our point cloud. First, we have the depth point cloud. This is going to be the point cloud that is generated from those depth images that were taken by the iPhone. So I will check this off, but I also am more interested in the densified 
and densified is the point cloud that is going to have the millions and millions of points that are generated from the images. Now for algorithm, I typically use the HW accelerated. This is a faster processing method if you have a high GPU computer. Everything else I'm gonna keep at the default, but here in noise filter, I am going to turn this on, which will clean up some of the noise that we might get from the point cloud, as well as the sky filter, just so that we don't have any points that are floating in the middle of space. And now we have the depth and dense fuse. This is going to help merge both of those data sets together Together so that we have a very clean point cloud. You also have the option to create a mesh file if you're looking to do 3D printing or just having an OBJ file of your project. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start processing the point cloud. Few moments later. I wanna show you a point cloud with just drone images um, just so that you have something to compare it to before we fuse both data sets. These are the drone images, the oblique flight, as well as the aerial nadir flight. I'm going to turn off the cameras just because they're kind of in the way. And if we take a look, this isn't a bad point cloud. There's definitely a lot of uses for it. But one thing you will notice is that the facade on the house, the garage, the siding, it looks like the front entrance here, a lot of it's missing. And that's just because the drone isn't really capable of capturing all that data inside. The drone is really good at overhead shots and a little bit of facade work if you're able to fly oblique but even then you're not gonna have all the detail that you might need for your project coming around back we have a very similar story we have some points here but not really enough reconstruction happening just because there really wasn't that quality of images given to us now that being said let's take a look at what the point cloud would look like when we fuse both of the drone images as well as the iPhone images with the Viadoc RTK and as you can see here there is already a huge difference just from first glance right off the bat we can see that there's a lot more detail here in the front of the house where the garage is very nice and clean I can even go inside at the doorway and you can see how much detail there is of the front door if I turn on my images here and I click at I don't know let's just say right here in the front door yeah a lot a lot more clean I can perfectly define where that corner is of the house yep that's it right there I could zoom in and even get closer if I needed to yeah that's the actual corner right there and that would have been very very difficult if not impossible to capture with just a drone even the finished floor right here you could see exactly where the finished floor grade is I can click right here and get the exact finished floor elevation of this house just from looking at those pictures from the iPhone with the Viadoc. Over at the drone, like there's just no way I'm gonna see that. Like even if I could, I mean, look at how dark those points are. The RGB values did not help. And yeah, I don't even see the door there. Like it's just, it just wasn't, it wasn't in frame. It didn't capture it. Some heavier vegetation is back here. And even with that vegetation, I'm still getting a lot of detail. Look at this windowsill. I can, I can see the windowsill coming out a little bit. I can actually measure that distance that the windowsill comes out of the house. Here on the side of the house, you can see we have our electric and gas meter. And if we look at the top of the house, I can actually see underneath the roof. Look at that, that roof line. I can clearly see all that. It's generated points up there because we have clear line of sight with the iPhone and the Viadoc. Front of the house continues to be the same thing. We can clearly see everything. Nice, clear detail. This is the AC unit on the side of the house. And you can see like the pipe, like it clearly tells us where the pipe is. I mean, this, this could be great for some as-built work. You can clearly see where pipes are. Everything comes out nice and crisp. Uh, I love how much detail there is there. Not to be mean to the drone imagery, but if I look at the point cloud that only has drone imagery, I, I really can't even see the AC that well. I mean, I know that there's an AC unit right there, but there's no data at all regarding the pipes or any of any detail. Like it's all just, just not there. And honestly, just like an overview, if you look at the house, there's just so much more detail. This is a much cleaner point cloud. I'm just very, very satisfied with how this turned out. And I think any client that sees this is gonna be very impressed. Now, I'm not saying that drone data is useless and that the iPhone data with the Viadoc is better, they're both just as important. But let me show you what the point cloud would look like without the drone data. You can see it's missing so much of that detail, especially the roof. A lot of the facade and the siding information is still there, which was data that was missing from the drone. And so when I go to add the drone data back, you can see we have a complete project with so much detail and so much to work with, providing us with the best product possible. I think anybody that uses the drone should also have a Viadoc RTK attached to their phone so that they can supplement those imagery and fuse both the data sets to provide an extremely detailed and high accuracy point cloud. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. If you wanna learn more about the Pix4D Viadoc, make sure you check out this video up here. If you wanna learn more about RTK drones and how to do surveying with them, then make sure you check out this video down here.